There are a significant amount of chemical reactions when creating mac and cheese. The first one is gelatinization. The process of cooking pasta involves gelatinization. This is the swelling and hydration of starch granules in the pasta. As the pasta cooks in boiling water, the starch granules absorb water and swell, causing the pasta to soften and become tender. This process is important to not eat hard pasta and for the absorption of the cheese sauce. The first step in the cheese sauce is browning the butter. This happens due to the Millard reaction. The Millard reaction causes the butter to brown and gives more flavor to the food. This happens because of a chemical reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars. This happens when food is heated. This reaction is responsible for browning and flavoring. The third chemical reaction is emulsification. This happens with the blending of fat and liquid. This gives the sauce its smooth and creamy texture. Emulsions are mixtures of two liquids such as oil and water stabilized by an emulsifier. In this case, the emulsifier is the protein and fat in the cheese. When heated, the fat in the cheese melts and mixes with the milk, forming an emulsion that gives the sauce a smooth, creamy texture. The fourth chemical reaction is coagulation. In coagulation, the cheese thickens and becomes more viscous due to the coagulation of its proteins, giving it a creamy texture. By reducing bitterness and improving the perception of others, the proteins in cheese coagulate or denture when heated, causing them to form a network that traps fat and liquid. This is important in making a cheese sauce because it allows the sauce to thicken and become more viscous, resulting in a creamier texture. The coagulation of its proteins is also responsible for the melting of the cheese, which gives the sauce its gooey, stretchy consistency in the oven convention most modern ovens use convention to circulate hot air around the food being cooked convention ovens have a fan that blows hot air from the heating element throughout the oven cavity ensuring that the heat is distributed evenly this helps to cook the mac and cheese more quickly and evenly preventing hot spots and ensuring that the dish is fully cooked throughout. The second is radiation. The heating element in an oven emits infrared radiation which is absorbed by the food being cooked. This causes the molecules in the food to vibrate and generate heat, cooking the food from inside out. In this case of mac and cheese, the cheese sauce and pasta absorb the radiation and begin to cook, forming a crust on top of the dish. The third is thermal conductivity. The metal walls and rack of an oven are excellent conductors of heat, allowing the heat from the heating element to be transferred to the food being cooked. As the oven heats up, the metal walls and racks absorb the heat transfer. Fourth, thermodynamics. The process of baking mac and cheese in an oven involves several thermodynamic principles including heat transfer and energy conversion. The heat from the oven's heating element is transferred to the mac and cheese, causing the water in the mac and cheese and pasta to evaporate and the cheese to melt. This energy conversion processes cause the mac and cheese to cook and develop a crispy crust. Overall, the combination of convection, radiation, thermal conductivity, thermal dynamics make ovens an efficient and effective way to bake mac and cheese, ensuring that the dish is cooked evenly and develops a delicious, crispy crust.